Hello everyone, after almost three and a half weeks, we are back in our kitchen. As you know, Turkey has been over one of the worst catastrophes of the last century and still in 10 cities we are under the rebel. Officially 40,000 people are announced dead, but some say that it's going to go up to 300,000, some say over a million. Time and history will tell. We as a team gathered together to make a long-term lasting food for the earthquake area. We gathered with some other chefs and Bahçeşehir University opened their doors for us and we cooked in all the kitchens that they have given. This was actually step one. Now we know that this is going to take a long time to heal. We have to continue our support, emotional, material, wise, in all kinds of ways. And what we are now trying to do is create a canned good, which is like a soup, like a pilav and like a stew all together. Your supports are really important for that. And in the later days, I'm going to also share with community and with shorts of different supports that you can make and it means so so much to us so far over fifty thousand dollars are gathered by you guys and we are really really thankful i can't thank you enough for that we as a team every morning looked at the supports that you have sent and it gave us the power and the little smile to get going and other stages are gonna eventually come depending on the need maybe we will go there and educate the people to cook. We have this education program for girls. Maybe we are going to be able to adapt it to there as well. Time will show. We are aware that for things to heal, on the other hand, some of the things should go back to normal. We are a company doing e-commerce, doing videos and production. So somehow for the wheel to turn, we have to come back to life as well while doing our other responsibilities. So our videos are starting. For the start, I want to make helva. And helva is our tradition to say our final goodbye to our loved ones. And this is a great tradition that I wanted to share with you guys as well. What it is, is actually when we bury our loved ones, we come back home, youngsters collect together, and the one who is really good in cooking comes to near the stove, and starts the helva. Stirring the helva and making the helva takes about an hour. Meanwhile, everyone gathers around, say their condolences and final words while stirring. And this is a way for the acceptance of the loss that we have. When the helva is ready, it comes to those ones who come together for the condolences and for the prayers. And the, everything happens in a rush. Youngsters distribute the helva. In a way, it's sharing the pain, but at the same time, youngsters do it, so it kind of gives the hope that life is going on. In different cultures, this turns into different ways. For example, Armenians do their helva, but they do it on the seventh day. And Jewish people, instead of helva, have a similar tradition with eggs, kashar painter, and some olives as well. In different cultures, different traditions happen, but food is there for us to understand, to help to cope with our losses. And the interesting thing about helva is, we don't make helva just when someone dies. We also make the helva, for example, if we move to a new place, if we have a new job, or if we establish something new, we make an helva and we distribute to sometimes to the neighborhood, sometimes to the loved ones. And sometimes people do it when a baby is born. So we come to life with a helva and we leave the life with a helva. And this actually also tells so much about these soils understanding about life. Let's start and I want to tell you more about while I'm cooking the helva and at the end my major was psychology and I have worked back in the days with the loss and its effects and I want to tell you more about how food plays a role on accepting our losses. Okay, for this recipe we don't need much actually. Some butter, semolina, sugar, milk, water and some pine nuts. This sometimes differs in different parts of Turkey. Some put some other kinds of nuts, now the pine nuts are really expensive. Some put, for example, in 
Cyprus halloumi, some kind of different cheese. It depends on the region. Now to these pine nuts, I'm going to add about 200 grams, which is around nine tablespoons of butter. While the butter is melting with the pine nuts, I have put it onto the lowest heat. On the side, I am going to put the sherbet. And the sherbet is actually 600 milliliters of water, about 625 to be exact, which is two and a half cups, three cups of milk, which is 750 milliliters, two cups with two added tablespoons of sugar, which is about 500, 510 grams. At this point, the heat shouldn't be very high. What would happen? The butter melts and there's milk in butter. If it's too high, it will start to caramelize and we get the brown spots of the butter, but we don't want it yet. So I'm going to stir both until pine nuts change a little bit of color and the sugar in the milk and water melts. Because of stirring, there's a lot of foam from the butter. And when we look at the pine nuts, their sides are starting to brown like this. Now it's time to add the semolina. When we mix the butter and the semolina first, it feels as if, you know, when you're walking on the beach and the water hits the sand, there is this rough texture. This is how it should be. At first, this is almost golden yellow. Now it's in a big heat, but the lowest one. I'm going to stir this for about probably 20 minutes. And this will turn from the golden yellow to milky coffee brown. This will take a long time. For example, this is a small batch. In the house, we make two, three more times of this. And it takes about 40 to 50 minutes for it to come to that color. Now this is smaller so it's going to be 20 to 25 minutes. At this point, what happens? In different parts of the city in Istanbul and different belief systems come into action. I'm going to tell you what we do, how I have learned it. This is a time to say your condolences to the one that you have lost. If you want to say and share anything, you can do it silently, you can whisper to the helva, and you can have your prayers. After, for example, when I say my prayers, I pass it to another person in the kitchen to do the same. And everyone who wants to do it, do it. And this is not just actually for the one who has passed away. It's also for your previous lost. You can do it to your mom, to your aunt, to your great grandma or to your ancestors. And this one that I am making is for our losses and for all the souls that have passed away. Actually, it's changing color really fast. What I'm going to do, even though it's on the lowest heat, the eye of the stove is big. I'm going to put it onto the smallest eye of the stove. In Sufism, helva also means sabr, which is patience. Because if you turn on the heat too much, it's going to eventually brown really fast, but it won't soak the water and milk the way you like it. The consistency wouldn't be nice. The smell wouldn't be nice. Because burn and slowly caramelizing is slightly different and it is really important. And also elderly believe that the nice smell should go around and it goes too high up as well for the souls that are watching over us. This belief system also happens, for example, in Buddhism, they burn incense for their losses. The smell goes up and purifies the soul. So different systems, different beliefs. But what we see over and over in life, good people's intentions are the same. Just the practice is different. So I have said my prayers. Now it's time to pass to everyone who wants to do it. As you can see, the color has changed slightly. And now it's time to add the milk and water. Before that, I'm going to add a pinch of salt for it to balance the sweetness. A half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Don't forget to mix. Now this has been boiling for a while right now. 
it's going to bubble a lot. So watch out your hands. Don't let it be in front of the steam. That's really the most important thing. What we do when we add it, we mix it a bit. First, it's going to be like a soup. Eventually, it's going to thicken. And meanwhile, I'm going to add the cloves. Three cloves. There is this thick part. I squeeze it, put this big one inside like this. Now it's boiling like this. I am going to stir it a bit, but don't stir too much. Turn off the heat like this and close the lid immediately. This will sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's going to soak all the excess water and it will come to its shape. Then what we're going to do, we're going to put them in small cups, put them in plates and distribute. I want to tell you about the five stages of grief. Actually, five stages of grief is kind of like the summary of how we cope and deal with our losses. What is the first stage? First stage is denial. Denial that it has happened. Actually, this stage is usually comes with the shock. We quite do not get it. It's usually when the person dies, until we bury that person. There's like a hurry, lots of things to be arranged. You kind of feel distant. We thought that like, it's not so big. It is gonna be good somehow, but like we really didn't grasp the idea at first. At this denial stage, some things happen for the person to accept and to understand. And what is this? Helva is one of them. After you bury your loved one, you come home. The first thing that is cooked by your loved one is Helva. And there's this rush, hurry to distribute it, etc., etc. And like there are things that must go on for the first several days, actually in some cultures first week, some cultures first 40 days, you don't cook at home. People, your loved ones, bring you food, ask what you need, what you want, or they in themselves arrange some stuff so that they bring food to your house. While we do the helva and say our condolences, it's another way to say goodbye. So for you to move from denial to understanding that you have lost the person. After this stage, from denial, the second stage becomes Anger. Anger is like a deep anger of anger to life, anger to faith, anger to the injustice, anger that whatever happened, this loss happened to me, happened to us, to my loved one, etc. While this is happening, people are helping and trying to feed you and show their goodness. Young people serving, young people means hope. They are being around means also another stuff. Third stage is bargaining. When we first think about why bargain over a lost one, but it's again a really important stage for acceptance. This thing has happened, but maybe hopefully another good thing is gonna eventually happen and this is the reason it happened, etc., etc. Some kind of bargaining might feel bad for us in terms of understanding, but it's a human nature and it's a way of trying to process in our minds and souls of that incredible loss. Then comes the fourth stage of depression. We feel less strength in our bodies, less strength to go on. This stage is kind of tricky because some people cannot move from depression to acceptance. And this is a hard stage. As I said, like different people move to these stages in different ways, but in some traditions, the 40th day, some traditions, 52nd day in, for example, Alevi uh, Shia culture has the 52nd day or the year anniversary. First year anniversary is really important depending on the person and their connection to their loved ones. This depression might take longer, but these stages are actually some, you know, kind of gateways for it to move. And in that also, sometimes helva is done, sometimes other foods are served. For example, in Alevi, for seven weeks, every week, there's the tradition and every week they serve helva. And finally, after this depression, comes the healthy stage, which is acceptance. Acceptance also comes with digesting the idea of our loved ones being lost and preparing and going on the life without that person. 
life goes back to normal. We try to cook the food that we are going to make. We have to do it ourselves and go on, so on and so forth. So I wanted to include this and also want to say another final thing. And it is something that I have uh, felt after I lost my loved one. We call that in Turkish Yalan Dunya, which is fake world. What I believe is when you lose that loved one, their body, their existence is no more there. But every time you think about that being, it is she is he is there. The feeling of love never lessens. The feeling of their existence, how it makes you feel is there. You believe that this physical world is more unreal than what you have there. It's really hard for our country, it's really hard for the world to have so much loss at one night. And it's harder for us to know that some of those people, some whole families, because in Turkey sometimes we have family buildings. For example, I also live with my mom, dad, brother, or at the same house. Families disappeared. Some people lost their kids, some people lost their whole family, some kids lost their families. Now we have huge graveyards. It's really hard to cope with the idea that, you know, none of those people deserved to be that way. So probably I am still at some <laughs> anger stage. I hope that nothing happens to anyone in the world like this. On the other hand, I know that it will and it will always be. That's it. Take care. <laughs>